What happened in the fourth quarter? I want to get a sense of the demand from your customers in the fourth quarter. Did you see a tailing off? Good morning. Good morning to you. Thanks for having me. Well, indeed, I think uh, we, we have seen a, a good development in 2018, both in terms of results and in terms of demand. We had a 5% growth for the full year. But as you mentioned, the Q3 was a bit softer. Uh, with 3%, we managed to actually outperform the previous year in terms of profit margins. But uh, sales show the slight uh, uh, coming down from the previous dynamic, mainly driven by a softer China uh, and a softer Europe. Uh, which is certainly for the kids in China due to the trade uncertainties and people being a little bit cautious. However, we see that actually demand is there. We look forward to the actual numbers after Chinese New Year and Q1, but we are very, very certain to have uh, further good growth in China in 2019 as well. Okay, Patrick, so it sounds like you have some optimism around China uh, despite the slowdown that you've just mentioned. Tell me a bit more about that Chinese slowdown. Where did you see it specifically? Was it in construction? Was it in consumer chemicals? I think consumer goods are actually uh, doing uh, very well. We are progressing nicely with our personal care offering uh, in China. But we saw certainly some softness, uh, as we mentioned, uh, mainly linked to uncertainty of our customers in terms of demand uh, in the plastic chain, so electronics, mobile phones, and a little bit of automotive softness as well. Uh, but that will probably resolve as people uh, find their way into 2019 with more certainty in terms of supply chains and tariffs. You have a beautiful new relationship. It's with Savic. How's that going? What, if I was to say to you what's the most important thing with this new investor that's come out of the discussions, what is it? Where is the meeting of minds? Well, I think the uh, fact of having uh, Sabic as an anchor shareholder provides us with a long-term strategic shareholder, allowing us to really plan the group. Uh, looking forward, you know, we have announced a major transformation and improvement of performance as well until 2021, and it really comes through, on the one end, operational improvement of our offering. This is progressing every year and will be the driver of growth in 2019, but also portfolio as we are uh, negotiating, finalizing uh, to uh, get the uh, high-performance material business from Sabic uh, um, into our portfolio, which will be a great addition in terms of high-value, high-margin business. And on the other hand, it allows us to sell more mature businesses like Pig so it's a profound reshaping of the group, which is taking place and will uh, secure a significant margin improvement uh, in the next couple of years. Yeah, when you talk about selling mature portfolios like pigments, Patrick, how has the level of interest in this asset been? Do you expect to get more than one billion Swiss francs for that pigment business? Well, I won't comment on the actual uh, process itself, but we are advancing well, and I think uh, it is a very solid business uh, a market leader in its in its area. So, from that point of view, we look forward to uh, uh, to a good development uh, further on of the process. Can I can I ask you, Patrick, uh, just the quantum of asset sales that we're going to see from you? Could you give us a range? Is it going to be a billion Swiss francs? Is it going to be two billion? What kind of divestments are we really looking at? Well, I think we back in September we announced uh, the scope of the divestment which I think by the market analysts was uh, uh, estimated to be around between one and two billion, uh, uh, and that's uh, more or less the range which is in the air today.